Welcome to my project. My project is about food, and that's something that we eat all day, and it can relate to us all, but we don't really think much about it, what it does to the environment and what it does to us. So I wanted to explore in my project about how it can affect the environment. So starting off, out of all the greenhouse gases that food can produce, that humans produce, food can produce 24% of it. And that's a lot considering that all the cars, planes, trains, and ships combined only produce half of that. And why would, let's say, food be harming the environment like this? Well, most of the food we eat nowadays are either from factories or from farms. And let's say you wanted some chicken. Then you would need some land to build a farm, right? And then you have to cut down trees. And fun fact is that we've already dedicated 30% of all land on Earth to raising livestock. That's like chickens, pigs, and cows. And then we continue to lose 20,000 hectare acres of rainforest every single day. So, and we have to build a farm, and then we have to give the give it food and we have to give it water and we have to take care of it and we and, and, and do that for years and that's a lot of greenhouse gases right there and that's not considering that that's just for one meal there are seven billion of us and we eat three times a day and for my research since food can produce so much greenhouse gases I wanted to see how exactly how much it, it produces so I sent out two surveys, one to my home country of Myanmar and the other to Hawaii. I got their answers back and I found what their average answers would be and finding out an average meal. Then I calculated how much. My research taught me that meat produces a lot more greenhouse gases compared to vegetables. Eating less meat would certainly help the environment. but. Meat shouldn't really be the problem since we have, humans have been eating meat for thousands of years and nothing has really happened. So I did more investigation. And what I found out was that countries like Vietnam and my country Myanmar, pretty much the entire world is developing. Countries are opening up, other countries are coming in, but people are getting jobs, people are getting more money. And if people have more money, they're buying more food, they're spending it more on food. And then if there's more food, people are wasting a lot more. Let me explain, and I'm not this old and you know, this is all fiction, but imagine I made $100 in 1970. I used 75% of it, which is $75, to buy food. And I'm full, right? But then in 2018, imagine I got a new job and I, got more mo I made more money. Then that would mean that I get $200. And I use 75% of it, which is now $150. I'm already full with $75 worth of food, so the other 75, I have to throw it away. That's similar to what's happening here. You can see in these graphs that universally we're buying more food and then we're wasting more food. And that's my problem here. You see, since food already produces so much greenhouse gases, wasting it will only increase it. Let's, let's say you're going to a restaurant and you don't have to order like the large or extra large, all that. All you need to do is maybe order like the small or medium and then you can always order more. Or if you still have some, you can take it away. Maybe if you don't, uh, for example, I need one bottle of milk in 1970 and I buy one. But now in 2018, since I have more money, I'm going to buy two, right? The other one, I'm going to have to throw it away. You don't need to do that. Only buy what you need. You can always go out and buy more. And then maybe if you have some food, just leave it, you know? You can leave it in the refrigerator, maybe eat it as a snack later on. Small tips like these can make huge impacts to the environment. If we don't waste food, we can save so much that we have already destroyed. Thank you.